Uh, hello. Um, so thanks for coming. And I'm going to talk about styling with strings. And I wouldn't take that too literally. In fact, um, that was the title for a long time. And I was just saying, oh, OK, this is maybe too negative. So uh, I changed it. And later, maybe you're going to see if this actually would make sense or not. Um, quick introduction. So uh, on the internet, I'm Simurai. I live in Sapporo. It's a town in north of Japan. But uh, I have to disappoint you, I'm not a real samurai. Um, my real name is Simon, and I grew up in Switzerland. And as you can see, we have uh, very long weapons, too. OK, <laughs> so about that CSS. Um, somehow it seems that people are very frustrated about it, like really, really frustrated. So, like, we see these kinds of tweets. <laughs> <laughs> and it's by somebody in this room. <laughs> um, he was on here, too. So, um, then if you search for CSS and GIF, you get this one. <laughs> and, yeah, everyone has seen it. And another class, uh, you want to finish it? <laughs> OK, it loops. So um, OK, next. Um, so that's another classic, like, uh, you know, 44 years ago. <laughs> yeah, vertical centering. Right? And even if you uh, go on the website of uh, CSSConf and you scroll all the way down, I think I spotted some subtle humor there. So I, yeah, I love those little details. <laughs> and so there's uh, no denying, like, um, CSS is not perfect, and I think probably never will be. But there's uh, two things I really like about it. And one is, um, it has a simple syntax. And I'm totally not really into iOS, so I don't really know. But I found this blog post. And that's the code to draw an inner border. Uh, they call it draw inner glow. So um, yeah, it's just like a lot of lines. Right? And then if we look at CSS, um, it's just a sweet single line. And um, to be fair, probably for us, like, you have a lot more low-level control. Like, um, you can maybe optimize for performance, and there's more features. But just the syntax, I really like how CSS is done. Then uh, the next thing I really like is that um, CSS allows for instant changes. And you can just open the DevTools, and you can just change whatever you want to right there. And there's no like uh, compiling. There's no simulator to start. So you can change the real thing. And um, I was thinking about that. And I don't know if it makes sense, but maybe somehow we are like uh, puppet master, so we can control and have like an, like real time kind of uh, feedback and a direct connection to like the dome. So um, I want to explore that a little bit more. And I made this totally fake CSConf app. And I wonder like if we, so this is, looks pretty basic, right? So, is there a way to kind of make this um, easier to style and customize? And I'm going to talk about three things. So um, it's going to be layout, color, and about size. Um, so layout first. Um, 
So if we have a um, page and we have text and we have uh, images and I think it's okay if we, everything scrolls the whole page, then we can use uh, flow and just wrapping. And then for images, we use uh, max with 100%. It's kind of uh, doable. But the little bit tricky is if we want to have a field page and there's fixed elements like a header and a footer and the space would always fill up and kind of stretch the edges. So if you want to do this layout, I think if you can, uh, I would use Flexbox because it's kind of the only way to have it like that and keep it very easy to uh, kind of manipulate. And I'm not going to go too much into Flexbox, but just like a little bit uh, to refresh. Um, once we set up Flexbox, we have to basically decide uh, what direction we want. And by default, it, it's always a row, so all the children go from left to right. But if we want to have from top down, we can have a flex direction to column, and then it goes top down. And as you can see now, um, the footer is kind of stuck kind of to the top, so how can we make the center part kind of stretch out and push the footer to the bottom? So there's a one property called flex, and if we turn it to flex one, then it just stretches everything and the foot is to the bottom. Then if we add children, in our case, we're gonna use like uh, align items and justify content center, and basically everything just centers. And yeah, it's uh, that easy. And sometimes we wanna also have stretched children. So for example, a title or a, like a search field or something. And for that, we can use flex one too. And then for the center part where we have many items we wanna have, like they don't fit in the space we have, we can have a wrapping and then it looks more like a grid. Okay, so that's kind of it for layout. We're gonna see what we can do with this later on. All right, so about color. So, uh, so layout just told everything, so we can skip that part. <laughs> um, uh, not really, but. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use, uh, there's a small part that's gonna be the same, so, but it's good because then I don't have to explain it. So, um, I'm working on this um, UI set uh, called Digit, and it's uh, for the Montage.js framework. And it's, I don't know if you have heard of Bootstrap or Suit or Ratchet or all those. It's kind of in that direction. And um, here you see it's the first version of a couple components we made. And it looks very basic and kind of just gray. And how it's set up is that each component has an own folder. And each folder has a CSS file, JavaScript, and HTML. And this is great because um, we can remove things, we can rename it, we can add new ones, and because they're all separated, like we don't have to worry that we're gonna break something, right? So they're kind of their own little worlds. And once we go to production, we can run a script and it combines it and minifies. And it actually only includes what you use. So if you use just a single button, it doesn't just include everything, it just includes the code for the button and style too. So um, this is all great, but there's like one problem is that because it's all separated, um, if you look at the radio and the checkbox, so it's basically almost everything is the same except the icon and the border radius. So if we wanna change the color, like the border color, what do we do? Like, you know, like we could, I guess, just have a huge list of selectors and kind of override it like that. Or we can create a new class and we can um, just put them all over the dome and in the markup and uh, yeah. I guess probably the best is to use a preprocessor for that. Um, is there anybody that doesn't want to use preprocessor or is not allowed to? Nobody. 
<laughs> so everybody uses preprocessors. Whoa. <laughs> All right, everyone can go home. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if uh, it's still going to be interesting. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I was styling this input, and um, I discovered kind of by accident that uh, if, if you don't use a border color, it automatically picks up the color, right? And um, yeah, it's what Leah told, it's like the current color, right? But, I didn't really know about it, and then I tweeted it, and then half internet was like, yeah, of course, that's how it always worked. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it turns out there's uh, box shadow and text shadow and outline that kind of work the same. And then Rodney wrote a tweet about the current color. So um, yeah, we can use current color as a background value. And it's pretty awesome because now we can't see the text anymore. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, like when I kind of saw this, I was like, okay, so why didn't we know about this? Um, could it possibly be that um, this is just not useful? And if we look at the kind of a typical button, so text color is white, right? So there's nothing that is white. I mean, there's a little bit highlight at the top, but it's transparent, so it's really like kind of useless. But then this happened. So iOS 7 came and yeah, there's some buttons here. And it didn't take long and then uh, kind of this style didn't really take over the web, but um, you can see a lot of this style now, kind of, too. And they're all screenshots from uh, websites. And then I thought, okay, so let's go back to our components. Um, maybe we can use something like that. So then uh, we created kind of like a modern version. So um, how it's done, it's like, you set a color, then you have no back, uh, border color, and the background is transparent. So then we have this kind of outline style. And for example, the slider look is kind of similar, except that it has a child element. So we want to have the same color for the thumb. So we can use current color, and it picks up the same as we define here. So um, now if we open the inspector and we test it, so we can change the color and the whole component changes, not just like one part. And we don't have to keep it on the component level. We can uh, kind of go kind of let the cascade decide. So we have color inherit and then if we go to the root, we can basically change all components with just a single property. And um, if we don't use a color at all, it's uh, black as a default. And because we can use a cascade, we can also kind of limit it where we want it, right? Like we can just change it to one section. And we can also add backgrounds if we want and change the color to white. And now you notice like a problem because the icon here is white too and it's SVG. But if we keep this fill kind of the same as the background, then it works again. And if you're too lazy, so remember the alternative title, you could also um, change it to like this outline style where we have uh, no background. And we change the fill to current color. 
So now we are basically again down to just one kind of color to change everything. All right, so um, that's our color. So now we go to size. Um, so if we look at this here, wouldn't it be nice if uh, we could kind of do the same with uh, the video with color, also with the size? And um, there's something similar. Um, anybody can guess? Just using M to resize. Yes. So um, basically, we, wherever we can, we use AMs, and then um, same with the color, we use the inherit, so we can control it from any parent. And sometimes we want to use uh, pixels like the border. So if we use pixel here, then it always stays one and doesn't change. So in a sense, we don't define like a, a, a fixed size. We basically just kind of describe the proportions from like the height and kind of how much padding there is. And now, when we go in and we can just, so 16 is the default. So we can just kind of change everything at once, kind of can go all the way down. So it still works with two pixels, but <laughs> probably kind of too small. And there's a one problem. I don't know um, if you can see it. So here you can see this one line is not even with the plus and the minus. And the reason is, oh, I'm not sure, but I think that if we use an odd number that the browser tries to uh, snap to a whole pixel because he wants to draw this line like sharp. So then when it's like 0 0.5, then sometimes he can't decide if he should round up or down. And then you get this kind of visual glitch sometimes. But uh, if you stick to even numbers, you should be fine. Like I only saw it with odd numbers, so kind of just keep that in mind. So uh, now, uh, what about uh, REMs? So at this point, we could have used REMs because the only thing is what we did is uh, change the root element. But if you use REMs, you couldn't do this here. So we couldn't just select some element and then just change the children at once. So AMs are just a little bit more flexible in that way. And there's a use case for using REMs. For example, if um, you want to decouple the something from kind of the size of the commode, like margin. So we can change the spacing between, and we can change the component size kind of separate and um, yeah, it's like nice to kind of have two strings to kind of play with that. Okay, so I think the trading is complete and now let's test this in our little app that we made. So um, if you wonder what this app does, um, not much, but um, you can search for the team. Here they come, and you can click on them, and then they start to wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry if I got the personality wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, it's a little bit silly, but it should do for our demo. And by the way, it's a fake search, so you can type anything. <laughs> um, OK. so. If we set up the flexbox that we saw before, now um, what it allows us to do is we can easily just reorder things. So we can grab the footer, we can move it up, and it just does all the calculations and kind of 
Like there's no hard-coded values, right? Like Flexbox kind of just does all the math for us and you can just, yeah, move things, swap it, and just play around till we think we found like the, the right position. And um, then uh, sizing, we can play around with the size till we think it's good, so uh, yeah. We can uh, limit it to just the header if you want. or play with the spacing, so now only rams get changed. And of course we can just change a single element or single component too. This is really handy because if your boss comes in and says, hey, can you make the logo bigger? You can say, yeah, I can make the logo bigger. So um, now let's test the color. So again, we can just go into the root, we add a color, and we just, black is the default, and we can just play around till we are happy. Then uh, we a different background. We can, whenever we want, we can limit it to just a certain area, so like we just add white to have the middle area. And I think the contrast is a little bit low, so uh, how about we change it to uh, I don't know, some purple or so. And the bars here, we can also add a gradient and use curved color. So um, the cut is kind of semi-transparent. So now it looks a little bit like it's mask. And uh, <coughs> at the bottom we can maybe add a, a dark one. And if we want to have a different style and not just the outline up here, we can just use background inherit and color white and just maybe no border or something. So now, for example, if we add a slider and you look up this value here, so the slider only changes this here, but because of the inheriting and everything, it just does everything at once. And um, there's maybe a couple more use cases. Um, there's a media query coming, like uh, ambient light. So um, in dark areas, like you could maybe change the whole UI to something dark, right? And you would have to do a lot of theming to kind of um, do that, right? But here, to maybe just test out how that would look, you can just have like, you know, background dark and then color something white and you're already done, right? And uh, one more use case, oh, okay, yeah. So if a user uploads uh, maybe a, 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 an image or something, you can run a script and maybe detect the kind of the main color, the dominant color, and maybe just adapt to that and have like the whole user interface change to what the user uploads. Um, I think one case is like iTunes changes the background depending on the cover art of the uh, album. So yeah. Okay, so with this combo of uh, Flexbox, current color AMs, in like kind of very short time, just kind of fiddling around, we can kind of create very a lot of different variations. And if you're wondering, uh, okay, so we changed this in the DevTools, but of course, if we 
refresh, everything is lost. So there's a feature in Chrome, like the workspace, and what you can do, you can map the URL to the local file system. So um, you add the URL and then it just goes to the root of that folder I picked. And then when we relaunch Inspector, So we can make a change and then we can refresh it and uh, it's saved. And if we select the uh, code editor, you can see it updates. And if you untick stuff, it just comments them out. So uh, yeah, like if you've heard the, like, the term like designing in the browser, that's kind of literally designing a browser. Um, I can feel an, still feel an elephant in the room. Actually, a couple. So, uh, so I mean, some probably say, okay, the flat rent is going to be over soon, and then who doesn't use preprocessors? I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> well, in this case. <laughs> and also, CS variables are coming, right? So is this whole thing, is this kind of practical or not, right? And I think all this kind of is just argument against current code. I think Flexbox and sizing, I think it should be pretty useful. So, um, so yeah, I agree. Like the current code is a little bit uh, between practical and just kind of a little bit hack for fun. But I still try to use this whenever I can. And especially when you start prototyping an application and you, you, you just want to maybe play around and see how it looks. I think that's very easy. And then also, um, if you have components that are very basic, it's much easier to add styles like shadows and, you know, then actually have to remove them or like overwrite them. So I think it's good as a starting point. And I checked out Suit yesterday. So, um, it actually uses AMS and current color with a, a preprocessor. So it doesn't mean that you can, you know, like it has to be either or, you can mix it whenever you want. But actually the real um, main point I want to make is the big picture. So um, this is quote. So creators need an immediate connection and it's by Brad Victor and his talk, Inventing on Principle. And he, yeah, like, if you remember, like, the tree where he just changes the code and it updates the tree, that's kind of the same. And uh, basically, the examples I use, it's more about kind of currently, for me, that's the closest I can get to that. And I guess it's a thing of like, okay, we had all those editing tools, like you now Photoshop or so, and then we had the code editor where we do everything by hand, but there's not really much in between. This, you see a little bit, right? But I think um, we should not stop, and that's where we, there should be something in between. And we should improve a little bit on that. Um, Although Scott is already very easy to please. Uh, that's it. Thank you.